Um, thank you very much for inviting me here today. Um, when I was coming here, I, just, I said, yes, of course I'd do that. It sounds a very interesting event, and I would love you to share our story. And then I was coming here, and I'm thinking, what am I doing? I'm going to Sweden, I'm going to Umia, and I'm going to talk to them about how to be more sustainable. How, how on earth can I do that? Um, and um, oops. So what I'm going to just do really is, is tell you a little bit about our, our journey um, over the last uh, decade or so. Um, and just share with you our experiences. I'm not going to really talk about our future plans, which are very exciting. But I thought it was we were trying to talk about the concrete things that we have done. Um, rather than some of the theoretical things that we that we might do, um, and also to be fair, your plans are probably better than ours already. So let's not let's, not, let's be honest about that. Um, and I was very uh, impressed by Ida this morning. Um, uh, she spoke, or this afternoon, it's a long day, but she spoke very powerfully about about what we were doing. And there's some words that I want to draw upon from what she talked about. So she talked about great, and I think we should reclaim that word. Um, uh, we talked about choices, and I'll talk about some of the choices that, that we've made as a municipality over, over the years. Um, and we talked about how you need to encourage and inspire people. And I guess that's really what the Green Capital Award is, is really about, is how do we, how do we um, engage and inspire people. So I'm just going to give a bit of feedback there. Um, so, um, I uh, say so I manage our city innovation and sustainability programs. On, on your program, you will see that I also was responsible for civil protection. So that's our emergency planning uh, response. And, and uh, interesting hearing from Ida, from the chief fire officer, about how those two things uh, might work together. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, how we work with people. Um, because they are who, who employ me and why I, I have a job and why I exist. Um, and, but also the interaction between how we invest in the city, how we use regulation, whether that's European, national, or local, and the kind of services that we, that we create. So I keep wanting to jump ahead. Hopefully that doesn't mean there's an animation in this slide, which, in this thing, which will be a real problem. Um, so uh, Bristol. So Bristol is on the west coast of, of England. It's a port city. Um, in size, we're about 650,000 in the urban area, about 450 in the administration. So we're somewhere sort of between Malmö and Gothenburg in, in terms of size. Um, and um, we're a, we are the UK's best city to live in, that's official. Uh, it, uh, it, we're also the UK's greenest city, that's less official, that's just me bragging. Um, and, and we are also, uh, the UK's smartest city that was announced uh, two weeks ago, just beating London into second place. Um, and uh, it is going to keep doing this, so my apologies. Um, we, um, we also have very high skills levels coming from both our universities. We're attracting lots of inward investment, and we have a rapidly growing population. I don't think we're quite matching UMIA's growth rates, but um, not, not far off. Um, and but that comes with its consequences, actually. Uh, we have very high, ho or high housing costs, and that's one of the biggest challenges. That exacerbates the income inequality that we see to make some of that housing even less affordable, and that then knocks on through every people's everyday lives. Um, and so when we're talking about sustainable consumption in Bristol, actually, for some people, it's, it's having enough consumption, being able to f afford uh, to feed yourselves, and uh, Albert asked earlier a question about so how many we have a thing called food banks where people can get emergency food supplies, and last year ten thousand people use that in our city, which is a shocking thing. Um, but we also have a very diverse population, and and they come from one hundred and eighty-seven different countries around the the world in their countries of birth. Um, so over the last 20, 30 years, we've been, and I talked about this bit this morning with some of the people from Umia, about our, our journey to become that city, that great city. Um, and um, if we had to put landmarks down, we could say in 2003, we, we wrote a strategy that said, uh, we want to be a green capital in Europe. Um, and that was in fact, I think, inspired by the cultural capitals program. Um, and 
in 2007, the mayor of the city said, so what does that mean and how do we do it? And I said, well, mm, I'm not sure what it means. It's one of those words that got written down in a, in a fancy document. We've all, had the, we've all seen those words in documents. But I do know that we can't do it alone, that we as a municipality can't do it. We need to work with the, the people of the city. And so that's what we, so what we created was the Bristol Green Capital Partnership. Um, and that, that name was quite fortunate because uh, that the next year the European Commission invented the award. And so we thought, well, <laughs> well, we had better apply for that award, really. Um, and to cut a long story short and quite a few of my grey hairs, um, in 2015 we became the European Green Capital. Um, and that's something that we're very proud of uh, for, for two reasons. Uh, we're obviously proud that we're green capital and we're proud that we're a European city and Bristol is <laughs> we are still a European city where whatever <laughs> administrative arrangements may come come to and Bristol was one of the major cities that did vote to remain in the European Union um, so so some of our our strengths that the Commission identified in that award was really about um, actually how we worked with our communities and um, how we use that to translate into that into the performance and to uh, investment for the future. And we also thought we'd have a bit of fun during 2015 as well. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we did in 2015 and then how that relates to the, the topic of this conference. So we set out ourselves three three goals. And please, if I'm going too fast, um, Pia will, will shout at me, uh, hopefully. Um, I get excited. And also, the English here is so, so strong, I forget you're not all native speakers. Um, so we, s we set about how do we empower local people to do more, actually, rather than just bringing initiatives on top of them. How do we show the leadership that we know we need to? So one of the things we did in, in 2015 was host the local government, cities, regions pavilion at the climate negotiations to try and bring the voice of what cities were doing to that event. Um, and also how do we share our experiences internationally and so thank you for the invitation today and many delegations have been to the city and in fact we were just uh, talking last night about a delegation from here of regional mayors from this part of, of Sweden came uh, probably 10 years ago to, to Bristol to um, share some of the experiences with us there. So when we set out the programme for 2015 we set out some very simple things that we thought everyday people would be able to relate to. Uh, hopefully no jargon, um, and um, we avoided some of those, those buzzwords, just what do people use in their everyday. Resources is the one that might be a little more um, contentious in that regard. Um, we also set out some very uh, eye-catching events, um, and uh, I, th I, won't even, I can't even begin to explain this. Um, uh, no, 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 it's a man, it's, it's a man wearing a chain mail uh, like a, a chain vest, uh, head to toe, and having 40,000 volts pumped through him. Um, but it's quite, it's not me, no, it's quite spectacular. And, and that was really just to grab people's attention. So we were just hearing in the black room about different types of people um, and how they were interested in different things. And this is a way of got everyone going, wow, what is that? Is that interesting? Let me find out more about it. We also said, look, lots of different people in the city are in. They're doing stuff here. So this is normal. This is n not. So we've got some personalities here. Um, so the, the captain of the basketball team on the right, the main uh, BBC radio channel in the middle, um, uh, a community radio station, particularly talks with the Black and Caribbean community, Ujima, uh, a guy from the television, does grand designs, maybe you get that over here, kind of talks to the eco greenies and and then Sean the sheep um, who I, I also understand has, has made his way across the North Sea um, and uh, in fact I saw when in he was in Beijing Metro when I last saw him um, and and Sean was quite an important part of our education program Ardman animations who make Sh Sean is uh, who or create Sean I suppose who look after Sean um, they they lent him to us for a, a uh, education program that is actually just coming to its final third year. So we decided the education program couldn't just be for one year, it needed to be for three. And I was talking with some colleagues who were in the creative space about, about the game that exists and the teaching resources that are available to help teachers use Sean as part of their education program. 
we also did quite a lot of work with community arts and we gave each neighborhood of the city a, a, a budget to commission an artist, a small budget to commission an artist um, who they interviewed and, and get a, gave a brief to. Um, and that was a quite a powerful part of how we how we communicate and how we engage people in different ways. And, and so one of those, for example, was to set up a community cafe in a old community building. And then the community has actually now taken that cafe on, but they didn't have the confidence to think that they could do that that thing themselves. Um, so it's an artist came in, rethought that, did some uh, radical listening, if that's what we were hearing about earlier. I've rewritten this presentation three times in my head whilst listening to the previous ones. Um, because there's so many linkages that are that are relevant. Um, and we also funded um, community projects across the city, lots of very small ones, some medium-sized ones and some bigger ones. And that allowed us to uh, have the biggest funding program we've ever had before, which was 20 times bigger than anything we'd done um, in environmental things, and involved hundreds of organizations across the city. Um, but I have found a, a good way to make friends with some people and make enemies with a lot, which is run a grants pro program, because all the ones who didn't get funding are not so happy. Um, and that is one of the challenges we had. Um, so I'm just going to tell a little bit of story about, about waste and, and the other end of the, the consequences of consumption and, the, and where we as a municipality get involved with picking it up, um, sometimes quite literally. Um, and so this is over the last uh, de decade, or decade or so, about our, our waste um, uh, production. And if we see at the top, we've got some figures about how much waste we produce per person. I was quite pleased when we were a little bit better than Sweden. Um, not that it's a competition, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it avoided some embarrassment, potentially. Um, and you can see what we did in 2006 and 2007 was introduce quite significant service changes. And we made bins smaller, and we gave people food waste collections, and we reduced weekly collections of waste to fortnightly. So we collect from every, every home, and we collect the recycling from every home as well. And we collect 18 different types of recycling at the, 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 the curb side, at the street. In apartment blocks, which are not so common, about 25% of the stock, um, we have communal uh, recycling areas at each apartment block. Um, and we collect the recycling. We don't make people drive to, to take it to the um, centre, as someone was talking about earlier. Um, then in, in uh, the about 2010, we introduced a new, a new service to deal with some of that residual waste that we were previously landfilling. We haven't been incinerating waste um, in Bristol before, and we've we'd sent this to an energy recovery process, not incineration. Um, and in 2015, we took all that work that was now that had been all those contracts that had, were in the private sector. We took those back in house, uh, back into this municipality, and we created our own municipal energy company because we weren't getting the kind of performance from the private sector and the contracting arrangements that we had through the existing arrangements. We felt we needed to re-municipalize it, which is contrary to the to the the last 30 years of, of trend in the UK. We quite like privatizing things. So then we have a, a mayor of about 18 months in post now, and, and uh, this is him in the middle here. And what Marvin has done is kind of take the waste campaign. Sorry, just go back a second. You see the sort of plateau. So we came down quite well, and we were doing really well, and we were really pleased, and then it sort of flattened, and it stuck there. So what Marvin's trying to do now is say, well, how do we, how do we take it to the next level? And what he's trying to do is really talk to people who are perhaps in some of those different segments we heard about in the black box, and uh, people uh, could maybe explain to others about what that's about, people who weren't so in environmentally engaged, um, about what, what mattered to them. And for waste, they often talked about litter on the street and what the street was like, rather than when we talk in a room like this, we're talking about resources and life cycles and things. Um, so it's that very visible waste they were thinking of. And so working with... Uh, a number of young people who kind of created these little superheroes um, who try and get those messages across in a very simple way, um, which hopefully allows people to engage with it. Um, but also whilst not talking down to people and, and trying to ensure that we provide them with illustrations and images 
that will work for them. So this really represents the waste that we produce as a city. Um, this here is a hot air balloon in the, in the bottom, to give you some idea of the scale of the waste. Um, and how much of it we are, the, the dark bits are the bit we're recycling. Um, and the, 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 the pale boxes are the amount that we're not capturing. Um, and then also working with that other group of people who are really active and have been active for years and are really greenies and are pushing the new agendas and starting new innovations. And so the, the Bristol Reuse Network, apologies for the, the screen quality, um, have a, a regular uh, meetup and are trying to push that agenda. So we're working both at the front end of that work but also at the, the uh, back of it as well. I just want to talk a little bit about travel. So waste was a longer story, travel is a little bit shorter story. Um, so Bristol has some travel challenges, and if you're coming from Scandinavia, then you would definitely feel that. Um, uh, it's our biggest worry, um, and it's largely privatized, very congested, very road-based. It's also a hilly city, um, and we have air pollution problems. Um, but we are making quite good, good progress, and we one of the ways which we're now doing that, and what we did during 2015 was, was commission some uh, community groups to help write their own transport plan and then use that as the basis for writing the municipal transport plan rather than the way we would normally do it, which is to write the municipal one and say, here, you can now object to this. We call it consultation, but we, we, now is your time to, to complain about this document or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then we may, we may change it a little, just a little bit. I know we're, it's a much more inclusive process than that, but, I, but you may recognize some of those jokes. Um, I'm not sure where this is being broadcast. Um, <laughs> and, and trying to change the image of cycling, for example. So from someone like me um, uh, to, to this kind of feeling. Actually, this is what you, what you get when you cycle, is you get freedom. Yes, you get from A, and B, A to B, but actually it's the feeling that you get that's what we're really trying to sell um, and help people experience. And We've had some really good cycling growth rates. We're still some way behind uh, this part of the world. Um, but it's gone up by 150% in the last 10 or 12 years, um, which is pretty good growth rates and, and very different from the rest of the UK. And we're, we're bucking that, that trend. I'm just going to tell you about a little food story as well. Um, so we food is a big issue. And, and we decided we needed to, to we'd have no municipal objectives about food. We're not, a, we're not the food authority. We are the transport authority, but we're not the food authority. And so how do, we, how, do we, how do we do that? Because it's a national, global system, as we heard a little about earlier. Um, so what we did was well, we started to understand the system. So we, we asked some people to do some work on, on how does the food system work and who feeds Bristol. And out of that, we produced a community-led good food plan and what we were able to do during 2015 was take some of those grants we talked about and give them to organizations who were starting to implement projects, and you can't not design expected to read this, uh, to implement projects that were working around those themes of, of food. And you can see they cluster around certain things, particularly about culture um, and about encouraging more local production. So what does the next decade look like for us? It's very much about collaboration and how we, how we work together. It's about how we, being positive about the future, innovating, being inclusive so we make sure we bring the whole of our society with us and no one is left behind. Um, and that we make a real difference because it's only by making that difference does any of that work count for anything. Thank you very much indeed.